Welcome back to another episode of the Experts in Fire podcast. I'm your host, Mike Venard, and with me today is Randy Mowry. Today's episode is Tips When Buying and Installing Outdoor Rated Fireplaces. Let's get into it. Hey, Randy, how you doing, brother? Mike, I am doing fantastic. How are you doing over there? I'm I'm pretty great as well. I just filled up a fresh uh, fresh cup of Joe. Oh. What do they call coffee Joe? I have no idea. All right, Randy. Well, we're going to jump into this episode, and we are going to talk about tips when buying and installing outdoor rated fireplaces. And I got to tell you, we struggled with the title on this one because... Uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, a lot of folks inside the industry call them, you know, outdoor fireplaces. They call them vent-free fireplaces. And you you were quick to catch this as we were talking about it. There is a danger in calling these vent-free. Although, for our listeners, there's no vent to them. Uh, and we do caveat, we do have some direct vent options for outdoors that have vents with glass in front. But, you know, the majority of what's on the market right now is what would be called ventless or vent free. But we want to be careful in this episode to talk about the difference between indoor vent free fireplaces and outdoor vent free fireplaces. So, Randy, could you walk us through some of the differences there before we get into this discussion? Absolutely. And it's pretty common. We're talking about gas fireplaces, just so for some of the folks that maybe have just jumped in for, in, you know, outdoors. Ventless is really, I like to use the, it's the category for indoor fireplaces. Ventless means just that it does not require a vent and or some people call it a flue or a chimney uh, for the fireplace to operate. The, the specifics of operation on the units are the burners themselves for the indoor fireplaces, they're 99% efficient. They max out whether you're using a 25 inch or a 42 inch model at 40,000 BTUs. And then they have what's called a built-in oxygen depletion system that detects if it has enough oxygen with inside that family room that that you have it in. And then if it starts to starve for air, it's gonna shut itself down. And then those are your standard metal chassis and things of that nature, painted black burners and, and grates for the logs. And those are your indoor units. Today, we're talking about outdoor. Outdoor is a whole different animal. If we were to put an indoor unit outdoor, a couple of things are going to happen right away. The system is not going to work properly. It's going to oxidize and rust. The chassis are going to oxidize and rust. It's going to immediately throw it out of warranty. And we do get folks that, well, I'm going to put it into a patio, so it's going to have a roof on it. Absolutely, completely understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. However, we are still subject to the outdoor elements on a consistent basis. That unit automatic, it's it's specifically for indoors, no warranty. It is going to oxidize and rust. Everything is going to fail probably pretty quick on that unit. So they make outdoor clean burning units. Clean burning unit is an outdoor fireplace still does not require a chimney, but now we're getting into units that have a all stainless steel chassis, stainless steel burner assembly, stainless steel grate, and the burners are going to, depending on what size, you, you may find one that is available to produce, we'll call it 60,000 BTUs of heat. So now when we go into the outdoor units, Similar to the inside units, meaning that they have very specific installation guidelines on the inside, we have the same very specific installation guidelines for outdoor units. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're building a patio that has a roof on it and you're open on all three sides, really the the main area is, is going to probably be the ceiling height, the minimum. Minimum ceiling height on most of these units is going to be about 84 inches. Uh, on these clean burning units, okay? Where where it really starts to come into play on the very specifics, and and, the, and, the, and I'm going to lean on the contractors and the home to make sure that we read the manuals because the models are going to vary. And this is going to vary, Mike, based on it's just not open on three sides. Maybe it's open on two. Maybe it's only open on one side. And then on that one side, we want to put screens. All of those scenarios have very different installation guidelines and they they break those guidelines up into like square inches of space or percentages of open area space so it's really important 
that we get all of that information if the, the client is calling in or the contractor. And it's important for that build, especially if we're in a pre-build situation, to design and get everything correct for everybody, Mike, for safety reasons. Okay, so rewind back to event-free for indoors. There's an oxygen depletion sensor put in place in these. They're built for safety. They're built to keep – some states, uh, event-free is uh, not legal for indoors at all. Correct, for indoors, correct. Yeah, just, you know, the throw, throw one out there, California, zero indoor vent list products. Right, and there's a lot of stuff that's illegal in California. However, shout out to all our folks in California. We know you guys have a lot of rules, and we can take care of those for you. Um, but in this scenario, this is one of the reasons why. They, they're protecting people uh, and, and wanting to make sure that uh, it doesn't turn into a poor oxygen quality situation inside. And, and we're talking carbon monoxide, 100% carbon monoxide. So in, when it comes to outdoor, calling them vent-free, we wanted to be careful calling them vent-free because there's a difference. They're higher BTUs, they're clean burning, but they're not rated to vent free standards. Uh, so I want to stress that and maybe I'm stressing a little too much, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that, Hey, it's vent free. So I can, and, and you know what, Randy, I figured it out. There was a restaurant that we used to frequent that put just regular linear burners for fire pits outdoors and then they built walls around it and it became an inside space correct it became an inside space we had to get a hold of them and say you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that then i believe it took the fire marshal coming in and shut those things down uh it was and it was just a back and forth but it's what people don't understand is the effects of carbon monoxide what carbon monoxide can do to your body in small doses you know, uh, nobody's in here long enough. They, you hear all the excuses. We have venting fans. We have this. We have that. But carbon monoxide is a silent killer. And we just want to make sure that we stress for everyone that in these scenarios, they are they don't have a vent for outdoor fireplaces. There is no vent for them. But the BTU output for them is higher and their, their safety systems, if they have a safety system, is different. So with that said, let's talk about outdoor fireplaces now, gas fireplaces, uh, because you see a lot of really cool stuff nowadays. Uh, you know, you have, you have your standard, you can build a wall and put a fireplace in, or you can build, folks are building like six-foot walls at, that are maybe only eight, ten feet long, and then they have see-through fireplaces in place so you can kind of see through it and maybe maybe you have a view of a lake or a ocean whatever so in those scenarios randy you you talked about the chassis themselves and, and what they're made of you know what is the expectation that i'm going to put this outdoors is this thing going to survive being outside very common to get that question outdoor rated unit is just that outdoor rated the, the chassis are typically all built up of a 304 grade stainless steel, which a lot of, you know, our fire pit burner burners are done. And, you know, fire pit burners in a lot of cases are uncovered. Most outdoor fireplaces are going are under some type of roof, you know, but they don't necessarily have to be because the the stainless steel that is used, you know. So if you're looking at building a patio and you just want the fireplace at the end of it, don't be scared to do that. Uh, it's very common installation as well. Uh, the fireplace chassis themselves, the burner assemblies, the, the the grates that are in there, the electronics, everything is designed to be outdoors. Now, what's nice about a lot of these manufacturers, they do have what they call weather protectors. Like if you're in a state like Michigan, for example, uh, I have a couple that are you know in Michigan, a couple projects, and they have like a weather door. So it's like covering your barbecue grill, um, or covering your fire pit with like a stainless steel lid. They make like a stainless steel cover that goes on the face of the fireplaces to help protect them from any kind of wind-driven rain or snow that goes inside of them. Yeah, so they are designed to operate outdoors and last outdoors. You have fire-related questions and we have answers. You can email us your questions at podcast at woodlanddirect.com or give us a call at 586-221-3638. 
We would love to be able to answer them right here on the Experts in Fire podcast. Okay, so these are going to go outside, and, and like all of our other episodes, safety is first, and then we talk about you know maintenance and, and how we can keep our investment for a longer period of time. Where can I put an outdoor fireplace? You know, I mean, covered patios, uh, gazebos, you name it, pergolas, they can be installed in any of those applications. The, the key thing to, for folks to consider and, our, you know, our contractors is these fireplaces are going to be built into some type of wall system, metal stud, already board, and then they're going to be either stone tiled. So really when the fireplace is built into a wall of some kind, and that wall can be external, it can be freestanding, so to speak. I, I have a lot of those with pergolas because of the nature of a pergola, it's open on all four sides has an open top, they might put like a vinyl top on it, like a rain cover on it. But at the end of that pergola is just a freestanding wall with the fireplace built into it. And perfectly fine. The house is one side and you're gonna put a wall on another side, it's, you're open on two sides. Really it's pretty unlimited as far as installation goes because you're essentially building it into some type of wall structure that is gonna fit the footprint and design of your outdoor space. You know, or very simply, you may have a concrete pad and you just do the bare minimum building a wall that is, depending on the fireplace that somebody buys, maybe it's only four or five feet tall. It has like a landscaping limestone top on it. That's perfectly fine. Absolutely. Because when you follow the installation guidelines, it, it makes more sense when people see it They're like, oh, okay, I thought I was just going to be sticking this thing on the ground. No, it needs to be built into something and it protects the exterior of the chassis itself. And all you're really doing is enjoying that front with that, where that flame is coming out. You know, my mind automatically goes to, and that's one of the beauties of having these fireplaces is that it's going to go into a wall. So you have a, you have a wall feature versus a fire pit that stands alone right or a fire table that stands alone this is a wall feature uh, that you can set up however you want what you have to consider is because there is no vent so there's no pipe running through that wall and, and coming out the top the heat is all flooding out the front of the unit and all of these units are designed really on an angle to help push that heat out the front and top of the face of the fireplace. So as that heat rises, are there limits to heights of these uh, pergolas and things of that nature? Uh, it limits to, you know, where my first combustible can be? Yeah, you'll find with most of the units, minimum ceiling height is gonna be 84 inches. So a lot of folks now with designs, they want them elevated off the ground. You have to consider, Minimum 84 inches is when that unit is sitting on the ground. So if we go up a foot, then we have to add the 84 inches. So every foot we go up, basically you're adding, you're adding the height to it. So, you know, instantly if you're, you know, you're adding two, now all of a sudden, you know, you, we, we've, we, we're going to need to be at that like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 foot range. So we want to take that into consideration, but they can be installed in any manner, but we, you know, and they'll, they'll vary, but most, most of these units are going to be, you know, at that 84 inches as far as the height goes. All right. So I can do that. Another thing that I see is really popular. And, you know, as we discussed having this episode, I was racking my head to go, it's, you know, it's an outdoor fireplace. You pop it in a wall and, and you're good to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're good to go, right? Exactly. Just turn it on. Just flip the switch, right? But uh, again, you're going to need to consider, you know, your gas line running out there. You're going to need to consider, uh, is there electricity needed for these, Randy? Most of the outdoor units, no, they don't require electricity on the inside of them, but you will find maybe even on some of the contemporary ones i shouldn't say that i would say most because most folks are using the linear contemporaries and if they have any kind of built-in led lights there is an electrical source that is required and those will have a built-in outlet the electrician will just run power into it because they have led lights coming out of them so you definitely always want to check and, and and ask you know depending on the model you're looking at because maybe 
maybe they only ran a gas line, they didn't run electricity. So that might, that might help us go in a different direction for a client. Here's the thing though, I'm putting it in a wall, Randy, where I'm gonna have a TV right above this thing. So uh, the electricity will be there, not a big deal at all. Let's push pause on that comment and say, hey Randy, should a TV go above? <laughs> one of these units <laughs> TVs above fireplaces uh, out, whether you know indoor and outdoor it's kind of the same a, a lot of the manufacturers are going to detour from doing that so heat rises as we all know especially in a clean burning scenario you're getting all of that heat out of the face of that unit and it is going straight up so if there is no we'll call it like a mantle barrier between that fireplace and that TV it is going to ruin a TV really quickly. It's going to ruin those electronics. Now, you know, I've had contractors that will put mantles in and extend the mantles in a manner so that that TV, they can get a TV above it and they, they, they have not had options, but always lean on the information from a particular manufacturer uh, because we're talking direct heat going straight up off these things. So, you know, there's, there's creating pockets for TVs. There's some other things that folks have done, but I'm always going to refer to the manual and the manufacturer specifications and their recommendations, putting any kind of electronics above it because of the heat, the intense heat that's coming off of the unit itself. And that, you know, that, I think that's the point. There are tricks and there's ways that you can uh, u utilize mantles to help protect uh, the TVs up there. And I got to admit, it's a sweet look. It, it does look fantastic to have the fire going the game on, uh, you're hanging out at the at the wet bar, whatever, you know, it's a cool situation to have, but be smart and be knowledgeable. That fireplace is putting out a lot of heat and uh, that TV is not gonna be able to take it. Now they make outdoor rated televisions as well out there nowadays. They're a little on the higher end of, uh, you know, your cost. They're meant for weather though. And that's, I wanted to point that out. They're, they're meant for weather. I'm unaware of any of those TVs that are meant just to go right above a fireplace. I, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, we don't sell TVs. Uh, I know there's a lot of, um, you know, bars and restaurants that use those outdoor rated TVs and they've got clear coverings on the face of them. You know, I think they're more anti-theft coverings than anything else. With most of the fireplaces, if not all nowadays, with the popularity of TVs above fireplaces, like you mentioned, most of them are going to have some type of under their clearances, the combustibles, like their TV considerations, we're going to call it. And, and it's going to, it's going to spell out, you know, not responsible for damages to the TVs, you know, file your manufacturer's inspection, you know, things of that nature, you know, but, but like I said, there's definitely a lot of folks that are, you know, installing TVs above them. Just be cautious and be smart about it. Absolutely. And, and all I'm trying to do is avoid some of that heartache. We get those calls uh, where the customer put a TV up there and they got a hold of the TV company to say, uh, manufacturer to say, hey, my TV isn't working. And they say, okay, walk me through where it is. Send me some pictures. And they're like, yeah, warranty, no. Because <laughs> it's above a fireplace. Exactly. Yep, just trying to save some heartache and let everyone know out there that, you know, there are options available. Give us a call and we can absolutely kind of walk you through those, especially with different fireplace manufacturers. They only make suggestions, though, uh, and it's legalese. Let's be honest, right? It's all legalese. I'm going to make a suggestion, but I'm not responsible to replace your television. Uh, the, the television manufacturers do the same thing. Some of them will just flat out say it cannot be put above a fireplace. So, you know, be beware of uh, each side of this combo, but also know that there are some things that can be done that are going to help alleviate the stress on the TV so that you can enjoy that situation. Because I, again, it is gorgeous uh, walking outside with string lights and that wall that is like the centerpiece. You got the game on, you know, you got whatever going, the Olympics playing, whatever. Uh, you can tell I'm an old coach. Yeah, right. <laughs> and... <laughs> Randy, is there anything else, uh, you know, in terms of, I think we talked about, or you talked about, these these fireplaces can't be completely enclosed. 
but every fireplace is going to be different. So, you know, if you're interested in a fireplace, give us a shout. We can walk through the manual uh, with you so that you know how enclosed it can be or how, you know, what the clearances are above uh, the unit itself. And I think you pointed out something very important. Folks want to, when you work with a designer and especially when you scroll Instagram or Pinterest or different things of that nature, they're great for ideas. But what happens is they get an idea and then they shop and they go, I want to put this four feet above the ground. So it's it's kind of chat height where I can, you know, have it's it's up higher, but they don't realize you're not putting anything above it then or it's going to be 14 feet in the air, you know, or, or 12 feet up in the air. So there are little things that we can definitely walk through with you. Is there anything else, Randy, that you can think of that we're, we would want to tell our listening base? Uh, not off, not you know, not really offhand. I would just uh, recommend giving giving us a call here at the office to discuss their particular project, so that we can help guide them to the correct product that will actually fit their need and their application of what they're looking to do. You know, because there's so many options out there when it comes to fireplace products, we can help alleviate a lot of the looking and shopping and reading by a, a simple conversation of their project and what they're doing, you know, if it's three walls or if it's a open on all four sides, you know, we can help with that and guide them in the right direction on the front end of their projects. And we're happy to do that. You know, a lot of people will do their backyards in phases. It's, it's not like a house where I got to, I have to build the structure and some houses get built in phases as well. But uh, when it comes to your outdoor space, you know, s folks will start with the foundation, uh, you know, the put the patio in and then kind of work toward their uh, walls and fire features and stuff down the road. Get a hold of us with the entire project. I don't care if it's going to be five years down the road, because we really need to know everything that you want to accomplish to make sure that you put everything in place while establishing that foundation in terms of electrical, in terms of uh, gas lines that are going to need to be run. And then in terms of just what we talked about, if, if a fireplace feature is the next step, and then let's say next year, the gazebo goes in or the, you know, whatever, where is that going to be uh, in terms of distant space? Is it going to go above this wall? What because then we can hopefully alleviate heartache <laughs> next year. Absolutely, absolutely. The further we are, the further we're able to help on the front end of any job, the better. The better it is for our clients. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Randy, thank you again for being with me, brother. And same thing to all of our listeners out there. We really do appreciate it. We're into year number two. We celebrated our one year birthday last episode, and now we're into year number two. I feel like we're just old now. Well, I am, but let's not go there. Let's not touch on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. I I'm excited for year number two, <laughs> Experts in Fire. Mike, it's always a blast doing these things with you. I agree, brother. Thank you so much. And then to our listeners, if there's something that you're, you're working on an outdoor fireplace right now and we didn't answer your question reach out to us get a hold of us uh we'll be happy to answer your questions and walk through any any troubleshooting any problems you might have or if you're right at that beginning stage of saying man i've got it all drawn up and i know what type of product i want get a hold of us we'll walk you through it and make sure that you're going to be able to have the best experience uh, around fire that you can possibly have so randy Appreciate you, brother. Have a great day, man. And I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, Mike. Have a good day.